With more, we are joined by retired Marine intelligence officer and global security expert, Hal Kempfert. Hal, as always, we appreciate you. First question that I have for you is, can this deal be trusted? After all, we are dealing with a terrorist organization like Hamas. Marla, it's always tough to say if it can be trusted, but there's so much momentum on this thing and there's so much uh, belief that this is gonna happen that I would be surprised if something was to, to stop. Now, the delay, that's not a complete surprise. There's a lot of logistics to be worked out. Uh, it sounds to me like it was mostly on the, uh, the Hamas side, although it could have been a little bit on the Israel side, but a one-day delay. Uh, both sides are in fierce fighting as it is, and the fighting's gonna continue right up until the uh, pause or cease fire takes effect. So I think this is, this is gonna happen. Uh, so I Israel says we shouldn't expect any hostages released until Friday. What, what do you expect that actual hostage release to look like? How does that go? Alex, the mechanics are kind of interesting. Uh, 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 what I understand is that the United States actually has a list of the 50 hostages. However, procedurally, uh, Hamas will hand them off to uh, representatives of the uh, uh, International Red Cross, who will then hand them off. They're going to the Rafah Gate in Egypt, hand them off to IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces. They will then be helicoptered to a hospital where they're going to be checked out, uh, see a lot of medical treatment, psychological treatment. They're going to have an assigned social worker that stays with them the whole time. Uh, Israel will not notify the families that their that their loved ones have been released until they have positive identification at the border, and they're going to make absolute sure that whoever they get is the person that they're they're supposed to be getting. At that time, they will let them know. And the reason why is they don't want to allow false hope to take out there. Now, on the other side, for every uh, Israeli hostage released, three Palestinians, uh, minors and women will be uh, returned to the uh, uh, return to the Gaza Strip. Uh, I understand Israel has a list of 300 people, so obviously they're looking at this maybe going beyond the four days, going beyond just the 50 hostages being released, and, uh, and that will be the, uh, the equivalent trade of each one. Okay, let me ask you though, so once this is done, let's say this all goes as planned, you gotta keep in mind there's 240 plus hostages this is 50 so what happens to those other hostages do we expect another deal to be made say six weeks down the road marla that's a big question and frankly i i don't think there'll be another deal like this this may be a one-time deal uh once this is over israel has made it absolutely clear that they're going back to uh, full-scale operations and it's very difficult to foresee how something like this could be negotiated in the future with the degree of military operations that, that Israel is looking at uh, doing after this. Both sides will be using this pause, if you will, for their own reasons. Uh, both sides will be collecting a lot of intelligence. Uh, they're gonna be repositioning troops, material. They're gonna be doing a lot of things. So uh, there's a reason why Shin Bet and the uh, IDF both were in favor of this uh, deal is because they realized there is some benefit to having this little break in time to do some reconfiguring and to figure out where the next phase should go. So that hearing that, that's got to be heartbreaking for the folks uh, whose family members are the other 190 uh, hostages, um, including, you know, all the men uh, who are basically being left behind. That, well, it is, but I will say one thing. Uh, the, the intelligence collection, part of that is trying to figure out where the hostages are being held. I'm fully expecting to see some uh, more raids, some hostage rescue raids. You may recall earlier weeks ago, there was a successful raid. They got an IDF soldier that was being held. They rescued her, got her back. Uh, I think they're gonna be watching everything very closely. They're gonna be making plans. And I expect to see not just these major bombing and attacks, but I expect to see some things that are a little bit covert, if you will, uh, particularly involving those tunnels to try and go in there and rescue hostages. Yeah, their tunnel system is very intricate and known as the Metro. So, well, obviously uh, we're gonna keep a watch as the, the clock is ticking toward these hostages finally getting released since October the 7th that they've been in custody of Hamas. Retired Marine Intelligence Officer Hal Kempford, thank you and, and happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving.